Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Right Time, a Wave Sports and Entertainment original presented by Prize Picks. My name is Bomadi Jones. Thanks for listening wherever you get your podcast. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Subscribe, like, rate us, review us, give us five stars. You only give us four stars. I'm inclined to believe you are a hater. It is Fosworth Friday. Dominique Fosworth, what's going on? Man, we are back. It's <laughs> bountiful topics. We are done with the baloney season. We are down <laughs> to the real meat. I ain't got to talk about no baloney. Try to pretend like I got something to say. Huh. I love it. Uh, er- Bro, let me tell you, you talk about you back, you back everywhere, bro. I done turned on the TV this week, and it's like you, you, you running the TV right now. <laughs> yeah, that's that. Um, yeah, they they gonna get it up at you, and it just so <laughs> happened that my first Tuesday, Tuesday's gonna be my long days. So I got a bunch of um a bunch of sports centers and first takes and get ups and my show and Mina's show, all types of stuff. But my first Tuesday back is the Tyreek Hill Tuesday. And it's yes. like, not only am I talking about everything, I was the only black, ask a black man available in, in, oh. in the seaport that day. So, oh. because it was like me and Jeff Saturday and um, Dan Graziano <laughs> were there. And so when every, somebody needed a black man to talk about black things, like, hey, get on in here and talk about the black things. Hey, I think Saturday could have done it. Yeah. He's capable, but don't nobody want to hear it from Jeff. No, I know, they, I know, but that would have been the should. best. <laughs> the best would have been if you'd have run away and they had no chance but go to Jeff. But hey, man, Jeff got some Atlanta bona fides, man. I asked him what high school he went to. He said Shamrock. I'm admit I'd never heard of it, but I heard of the schools he said that they played against. And I was like, oh, oh, yeah. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff's met us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Jeff, Jeff's met us. Jeff is comfortable around us. There are some things that his views are predictable. There are some areas where they are not. And we had dinner with Jeff and we got to do that again because yes. getting you and Jeff together for the first time was like old friends. Cause yes, Jeff, Jeff knows people like you and you know people exactly like Jeff. And yes. I think when Jeff comes up to New York City, there are very few people around in New York City who identify the type of Jeff that Jeff is the way that you do. And you guys yes. don't agree on much, but you feel each other. You just Yeah, yeah, see, <laughs> yeah, agree. That's not that's not even yeah. the point. You know yep. what I'm saying? Like like yeah, we going to have some differentiation, but look, he won't be over forever cuz he was the first person that I've heard say out loud what I always thought was crazy about when white people don't want public transportation to come to their neighborhood because they say it's going to bring crime. And he's like, so what do you think they're going to do? Break in your house and then go get on the train? And I was like, yes, common <laughs> sense has shown up. Yeah, that is that is very much the gem. So I think that's one of the things I appreciate, appreciate about him is that he going to keep you grounded. When I find myself thinking about like trying my best and I don't want to say it as a negative, but like trying my best to incorporate new views. And sometimes it's healthy for me to do that. And I feel like I end up in a better place, but sometimes you catch yourself and you're like, man, if you have that conversation around my man, Jeff Saturday, he going uh, fundamentally, whether it's about football or not, the gist of what he is going to say is yes. run the damn ball. That's it. Yes. <laughs> that's, the gist, that's the gist of every Jeff Saturday opinion is run the damn ball. I would just like to point out that we generally acknowledge and believe the linemen to be the smartest dudes on the football teams, right? Like this is kind of an across the board conclusion that is drawn. And they always be saying, how about you run the ball? I just want to throw it out there, right? Like I am a, I'm a big run the ball proponent. If for no other reason, dad, I, I can imagine how it feels when they just run the ball on you over and over and over again. To be fair. That's just also making their job easier. If, if they were not invested, <laughs> you know what's really hard? Keeping Miles Garrett off your quarterback while you backpedaling. Yeah. Fair, I, as a fair. quarterback, I advocate for y'all to run the damn ball too. Please. <laughs> I don't mind tackling. People say corners don't like to tackle. I don't mind it. I'm fine with it. It's a lot easier to tackle a big ass running back than it is to run with Tyreek Hill. Nope, that's that that all checks out. That's fair. Uh, it's unfortunate we're recording this on Thursday because Buffalo and Miami is going on. And by the like we, we talked about it before, people would have seen it after. I do think that one is gonna be uh, a pretty interesting one. I saw you on TV talking about Tyreek with uh Stephen A and Shannon. I thought you did a very good job on that with an all-time classic line. I feel like we are having what is a private conversation in public right now, and that is not the point that we need to make, right? Like, yes. Tyreek Hill was being a bit of a jerk with the police. I would not rec- recommend that behavior, 
However, let's 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 make the let's keep the main thing the main thing, big dog. Yeah, no, nah, that was and a lot of people reached out to me, and some people said I didn't like I didn't do well. Anyway, that's that's not the point. A lot of people reached out to me and were saying I bet you was pissed at Stephen A. and like you was gonna lose it on him, and I was like actually like what I appreciated was there are a lot of people that think that. And I would have never had an opportunity to address it. And I think that there are some people who I I was able to reach that ha- understand why it's problematic to say that. And maybe I wasn't hard enough on him, but like that is, I'm not surprised that he said that not because of Stephen A, but because he's a black man of a certain age. And there's a level of like jadedness, I guess, that comes with black men of a certain age. And fundamentally, the thing he is saying is they ain't going to change. So yes. you got to, and and I'm not old enough or beat down enough to the point to to feel like I have no hope in telling them that they still got to change. Yeah, I tell you this, and I don't think this has been discussed enough. Um, Tyree Kill handled that like a man who's been thrown on the ground by the police before, right? He did. He did not like him just being like, "Call Drew." I'm yeah. getting arrested. Like he seemed to be like, nah, 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 man. When they do it like this, nah, you ain't gonna hit me, bro. Like it's like, nah, nah, nah. This one right here, I know, I know how this one is gonna roll through. He was, I would have been like, yo, what's happening here? I don't really understand. Like I'm very confused. What? Nope, nope, nope. Not him. Not him. He was like, oh, okay, it's one of these. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's yeah, cool. and I, I think I, the the things that Stephen A was critical of, I would have never done. But also in that situation. Tyreek was calm under pressure, man. The cops was <laughs> the cops was out there freaking out. Like they were surprised that they were in an altercation today. You know, like, yes. like they were shocked. Like they were on their way to to um their jobs, and then suddenly someone jacked them up. Tyreek Hill, it did he did handle like someone who has been manhandled by the police before. He's like, oh, they run, they run in this play. They run okay. in this play. I've seen this before. <laughs> check, check. Yep. Just gotta hold my breath. <laughs> right. Just got to hold my breath and, and, and make it through. And I think also in thinking about what happened, my man's thing was just give me my ticket so I can go on my way. One would think that the police would also simply want to write the ticket and go, but nope, 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 nope. That's not really it. You don't get to say that this is over. I get to say that this is over. Yeah. There's just so much power trip stuff. And, I, I, I'm, there are certain analogies that I hesitate to use because I don't want to like um, dehumanize anybody or make it a paternal situation. But I do, as a father in this current age, I've learned that you got to put your ego aside because the police recognize, I recognize that there are some tools that were used against me that I can no longer use. So in Continuing to turn the volume up on the situation when I'm dealing with my kids, we eventually get to a point, and I learned this years ago, I keep turning the volume up where I get to a point where it's like, I can't do nothing but fuck you up at this point. Like, I don't have a choice. And I, I'm not the type of parent, I don't want to be the type of parent who does that. So, like, I've learned these, like, de-escalation skills. And I'm not saying Tyreek Hill is a kid, but there's a clear person with authority and power and control in the situation. And I, that's what, that's the first thing I thought of where I was like, I've heard myself say that. Who you think you talking to, to my kids? Right. I don't say that anymore because if they say something back to me, like, nigga, you, <laughs> I don't know what to say. My, my bad, my bad, you, then how do you, how are you supposed to respond to that? Right. At that point, there's nothing left to do, but punch that person in their face. So I don't want to get into that down and distance. Oh, I'm all for everything. The football analogies are flowing. Yes. I don't want to be in third and long. Yes. <laughs> I do not want to be in third and long. I will give you another analogy that fits what you're discussing. It's like the Star Spangled Banner. So the thing about singing the Star Spangled Banner, and I can't sing, but I know this. The thing about it, though, is, oh, the land of the free, that note is way higher than really any other note in that song, right? So you have to start low to give yourself the opportunity to have room to get to that high note, right? You got to give yourself room to get to the land of the free. (laughs) 
<laughs> that is a perfect analogy because there are some uh, inferences, inferences in the words that you are choosing. But yeah, they yes. started out there. They started at the end of the song. You can't no, 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 no. They came out there playing a the little John. Whoa, 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 whoa. Like, hey, man, like that's, I mean, I'll also make this note. But they were like, they know it's Tyreek Hill until, nah, nah, nah. They ran them plates immediately of, of that spaceship. Look, it only could have been like three people. Like at that time where they were going, it only could have been about three people. Right. Well, you're assuming, don't ever assume people are smarter <laughs> or don't ever see, assume that people aren't dumb. Like I, all the context clues, I'm with you. But they were motorcycle cops too, so I don't know their computer situation. But it was clear that one of them told the other one, and he responded by saying, fuck. Like, oh, shit. Like, you know who that is, right? And he was yeah. surprised in that moment. So at least one of them didn't know who they were dealing with. And I think they probably, they're not dumb enough not to recognize diamonds and $300,000 cars. So I think that's probably what jumped to their mind. Like, oh, no, nah, so something's up here. If they just looked yeah. over their shoulder and say, oh, that's what's up. But they recognized this <laughs> dude in a tank top with diamonds in a $300,000 car in Miami. They're like, oh, we're going to rough him up. We're going to find something. Yeah. There's something here. There's nothing there but a cheetah, guys. Relax. Yep. Although I guess, I, see, I guess my thought of they know who it is is because of the proximity to the stadium. But there is, yeah, in Miami, the dude in the tank top with diamonds in a $300,000 car. You are correct. Could be a number of people may not actually be their cars, may only be their cars for the weekend, may be a car they somehow purchased with money they don't actually have. But, yeah, it can be just about anybody. Like, you got to be careful racially profiling in Miami. I told you about when I went to go buy that watch, and that dude racially yeah. profiled me. And I'm like, bro, you've been working in Miami too long, man. How you know I'm not <laughs> Kodak Black or Six Lack yeah. or some of them, them other rappers? <laughs> imagining you as Kodak Black is hilarious, but yeah, that, that dude is giving away the sale in Miami, but I think one thing that I didn't take in consideration is like, rich people go to games too, so like, just because it was near the stadium doesn't mean, the fact that he that you looked in his car and saw that it was a muscle, like one big ass muscle behind the seat <laughs> or one little ass muscle behind the seat, you know what <laughs> criminals don't have time to do well i guess if they just got out that's a different story but well yeah yeah but no 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 the just got out of jail physique is much different than the athlete physique as the athlete physique has far more nuance right yeah. the jail physique is bench pressing pull-ups yep and the athlete physique yeah it's it, um it has abnormalities where you like oh, yes don't nobody work that muscle out <laughs> right Right. Like that dude got a physique that looked like he like like a jail dude looked like he got a physique like he just been throwing stuff around. Like it was this dude named Slim that worked in the cafeteria at uh, CAU when I was a freshman. And it was very clear from the tattoos and a couple other things that uh, Slim had done some time. Like you just know it when you see somebody. And I'm going to keep going with this about Slim because I've been looking for an excuse to tell this story quite a, for quite a while. And here we are. So. I forget what happened, but Slim decided that he was going to put us on some game, right? He had some true game to offer for, to us. I don't remember what prompted it. I mean, it must have been a woman of some sort who walked past. But Slim looked at us and said, see, sometimes that's why you got to wrestle with him. And we like, Slim, wrestle with him. That's what you got to do. That's what you got to do, Slim. Slim, like, yeah, you got to wrestle with him. Then you know what happens? You, you start wrestling with him. You reach down there. You know what you get? What, Slim? Handful of honey. Oh, God. <laughs> so at this point, God, we, we are deathly sure that Slim is serious, but we're not sure if we have room to laugh. So we try to hold it together. And then Slim says, next thing you know, Slim says something. Next thing he said, he's like, and then you know what it sounds like? We're like, what, Slim? He go, oh. Slim. I, I have, oh gosh, Slim. But then we remembered Slim does some time. Slim. I don't I don't know what to ask. I, the questions I want to ask, I'm scared to ask. 
<laughs> oh man, I don't know what. Yeah, Slim, yeah. Uh, Slim, Slim scares Slim, me, Slim, man. Slim, Slim said, "Oh." <laughs> So like, you no. got a wrestle with her. You got a uh, wrestle with her. Gosh, and you guys are you are freshmen, so you you didn't have you didn't have the uh, the gravitas at that point to say, "Hey, Slim, nah, dog, that that ain't um, that work." I got news for you. I could have been a red shirt senior, <laughs> and I don't think that I would have had the yeah, gravitas to. Yeah. And look, man, you have to understand the look in Slim's eye. Slim was hitting us with that true game. No, nah, that is garbage. I'm going to push back on you just a little bit about that. Just a little bit on that, right? Okay. It didn't sound like Slim was advocating for violence. Okay. Slim was just talking about a little wrestling. <laughs> and I assure you, there's somebody who's listening to this right now and who is saying to themselves, hey, Slim hit y'all with some true game, right? Like some people, like that that physical activity, that exertion, and then next thing you know, it's game time. Well, yeah, that that is Slim gonna find his match. That, that ain't gonna That's be what I'm match. saying. That ain't gonna be That's what match. I'm saying. It ain't gonna be your match. You correct? See, we can't yeah. we can't we can't project our own deal breakers. That's true. Onto other people. You know what I'm saying? I have. Um, We've talked about uh, like the strip club experience before, where it's like there are certain cities where the strip club feels like a performance, and it feels like the dancers are like above you in the same yes. way when you go to a concert, where you're like, "Oh, I'm here to see them. They the man." Right. That's an experience that I'm okay with. But my first strip club experiences are like sh- I hated them. I didn't like going to the strip club because it always felt like they were beneath <laughs> me, and like yes. they were. And that's what that's that's what I hear from Slim is like, I don't I want to feel at the strip club. It feels like at those strip clubs, it's like I'm paying you to pretend like you like me. Yeah. I don't want to feel like that. <laughs> I do not want to feel like that. I nah, want to feel nice. like like, yeah, you can't wait. Look, Slim, you were looking for somebody to be above you, not beneath you. <laughs> and with this wrestling, you know what Slim was looking for? An equal. Yeah. The NFL is back, which means you could turn $10 into $1,000 in a single game watching your favorite teams only on prize picks. You can make a prize picks lineup in as little as 60 seconds. Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what make prize picks the number one fantasy sports app. But rather than hearing it from me, let's talk to somebody who uses prize picks. Sean, how the picks been going for you? You know, Bo, I'm excited the NFL's back, and so is prize picks because they have this new special promo this month. One Caleb William passing yard gets you one win on prize picks every week in September. That's right. Only one yard gets you an automatic win every football weekend in September. Four weeks of free W's. Don't miss out on this deal on prize picks because it's gone when September ends. There we go. So make sure you go to prizepicks.com slash Bomani and use code Bomani for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash Bomani. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sean, school is officially back in session for kids. What's something you'd love to learn? I know as adults, we tend to lose a desire to learn, but do you make time to learn new things as often as you would like? You know, for me, Bo, I'm always trying to learn whether it's picking up something new in regards to this job, like a new editing tool or, you know, a piece of production equipment, or also learning something about the news that I might have never seen before. And, you know, thanks to our If You Haven't Heard segment on our Monday episodes, I'm I'm able to do that. That's right. And therapy can help you reconnect with your sense of wonder because your back to school era can come at any age. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Bomani today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Bomani. All right, we back. Uh, We got Bengals and Chiefs this weekend in the NFL, uh, Dominique. The Bengals about to be in that, or could be, I mean, I'll say it, they about to be in that dreaded 0-2 situation. And, and I feel like they got a season that the wheels could come off of 
real fast. Jamar Chase won his money, ain't got his money. T. Higgins won his money, ain't got his money. Joe Burrow hasn't gotten hurt yet, but you know what that means? It's coming. Um, like the wheels could come off of this pronto. And they and they can't stop the run. <laughs> like Ooh. we haven't even got, got to the field. They couldn't stop the run last year, and they couldn't stop the run this year against a team that we was like, you know what? They're not gonna be able to do is throw the ball. So let's let's load up this box, Lou, and stop the run. And they couldn't. They put the game away on their ass because they couldn't stop the run. And you said um Joe Burrow isn't hurt. He ain't healthy. Yeah. I mean, based on all this internet sleuthing, man just out here swinging his wrist around, looking like the water bottle too heavy for his wrist and not <laughs> um, attacking down the field the way that we've grown accustomed to. Like that situation went from, man, this is looks great. We got these great receivers and uh, one of the best young quarterbacks in football to one where the future might be grim. You know what happened? They didn't stop being the Bengals. Yeah. Right? Like, look, we talked about this, and I give this to the Bengals. They did not overcomplicate their draft strategy. They got dudes from schools that you have heard of who have done things that you remembered. Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins. Joe Mixon ain't there no more, but Joe Mixon is an example of that, right? They went and got some good old-fashioned, recognizable names on offense. That's what they did. Like, Jamar Chase, um, I still think it's great that the Lions took uh, Panay Sewell the Bengals took Jamar Chase, and you can still to this day make the argument that each team would have been better off taking the other based on things that have happened, right? Nobody did the wrong thing. Yep. But there's just how do you build a football team? You can make those decisions. Okay, but Mike Brown is still Mike Brown, and Mike Brown ain't trying to give nobody no more money than they absolutely have to get, and people don't get over that. They don't. Yeah, and I don't know. Mike Brown's been slow. Like he's finally got around to doing the naming rights, and apparently he had to do that in order to pay Joe Burrow. Like yes. there are certain things, and <clears throat> like there's some principal stuff that, like, I respect Mike Brown being like, I want to keep my dad's name on this stadium, but you're going to have to pay a price for that. <laughs> and like, I respect the idea that you, the league has grown to a point where you can't afford it no more. You're going to have to sell some chunks. Or you can't afford it no more because what you can't be in a situation is that your decision making is going to be influenced by how well you run in your business and how well your other businesses are doing, especially when you ain't got no other businesses. So that's going to be a bad situation until something else changes there. Yeah, all these family owned teams. Yeah. Like in every sport, it's a count, especially when somebody dies. Right. Mm -hmm. Like once somebody dies, you got children with different interests and everything else. And one thing they could agree upon is they'd like to have a few billion dollars. And these teams that they have there are like it could become a few billion dollars. But I'm asking you this. And I don't ask this rhetorically, I ask this sincerely. If I were to ask you what makes Joe Burrow an excellent quarterback, what would you say? Yeah, it's uh, it's all the intangible stuff. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's all that stuff. Like, so I'm stuff. not tripping there because I do uh, think pocket movement is the one thing that I can point to. Like when I saw him at LSU, I was like, oh, there's the number one pick in the draft. And it was because of how well he moved in the pocket, even though he holds the ball a little bit too long. But he absolutely seems to be. So what's the thing about Joe Burrow? He be getting it done. Like that, that seems to be the answer. And up until this point, for the most part, it has been the answer. But I don't know what dialing it up looks like from Joe Burrow, because quite honestly, Every time I've seen Joe Burrow look excellent, he's been surrounded by something that looks like the event. I think the watching the Jets game kind of and listening to you uh, and Jason Goff talk about like football, it kind of brought to mind how the game has changed. And there it feels like Aaron Rodgers is going to go out there and try to Aaron Rodgers his way to a championship. You could do that at one point. It feels like you can't do that no more. You need, you're going to need somebody around you to take some pressure off of you. And right now it seems like it's more and more offenses scheming up easy wins for you. Now, granted, we don't need to go back, but to last year to see that sometimes the quarterback going to have to go above and beyond. Right. But I think there was a time in this league where the rules were set up such and the offenses and defense were in a way, were set up in a way that the quarterback could just go out there in the receivers too, just go out there and be better than who they're lined up against. I think that's kind of gone now because these other teams are manufacturing offense in a way that 
you're going to have to get some help. And Joe Burrow, their offense has kind of evolved into that sort of situation where it's like, all right, Joe, go out there with your great receivers and get busy. If one receiver is pissed off and the other receiver hamstring hurt, hamstring hurt, <laughs> yeah, then uh, then it's gonna be. Oh, real and by hard the way, he's pissed off too. Yeah, that's he true. just you know <laughs> he's yeah, not. Which, which he just why, signed the tag. Yeah, I, I've heard. I'm not a doctor, but I do think that <laughs> money is connected. My money bone is connected to my hamstring. I'm pretty sure <laughs> that my money bone connected to my. Ha- if you guys fill up that money bone, and I, I have a feeling that the hammy gonna get healthy. <laughs> my money bone is just, my money bone is sticking out. <laughs> you pop that money bone back in. <laughs> and you gotta get everything in alignment. You gotta get me lined right back up. <laughs> and on the other side, we have the Kansas City Chiefs, where we gave Patrick Mahomes the fastest little guy this side of Tyreek Hill. Well, hold fun. on, what what side of Tyree Kill are you talking about? Because he is on the top side, it, it, it appears. So I feel like the Tyreek speed is more functional in more ways. Like I feel like you can use it more on horizontal stuff and vertical stuff and vertical to horizontal, horizontal to vertical, so forth and so on. And Worthy, who I thought as a freshman was the best freshman receiver that Texas had ever had. He was just that fast, man. He's tiny, but he's got it, right? Like, he's not a track guy playing football, right? Just somebody that's doing an impression of a football player. He's got it, and they got him out there in the Andy Reid. So he basically, he's not, like, to me, Deshaun Jackson is like a borderline Hall of Fame caliber of player, like a legit number one receiver at that size. And I don't know if Worthy is as good a receiver as him, but he can give you a lot of the stuff and give you more of that jet sweep type stuff that I think that you could get out of, out of Jackson. Yeah, I think it allows him to attack more parts of the field. The thing about Tyreek Hill is that he has it all except for the height. And it's the what you rarely find is guys who have short area quickness and elite track speed. It's normally going to be one or the other, which is why you get these little guys who are built like Tyreek Hill in the slot getting busy, but they ain't running past nobody with their little ass. And then when you throw the <laughs> ball up, they, they can't go up and win it. And track and traffic, and then when you hand it to him, they can't break tackles. That's the thing about Tyreek Hill, with the exception of his height, he got everything else. And if he was taller, he may not be able to do all that. And I think that, yeah, we can't put Worthy in that category because I don't think that he has the same like hiccup that Tyreek Hill has. Right, but he he may not need it to break this offense. And to be fair. His touchdown catch was, uh, I mean, it was blown coverage. Like, you could have caught that and took that in. That wasn't a function of him being special. And his touchdown run, you saw the speed, but the more I watched that, the Chiefs just mowed that side of the, side of the line down. <laughs> oh, really? But, yeah, 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 yeah. Go back and watch. There was nobody there. But he got to it fast. You could see the linebackers trying to scrape to it, and he is flying by them. That speed is scary. And the thing is, he just got to catch one of them. Just catch one of them, and everybody in the league is going to be scared. Want, take that jet sweep. They're going to have something built off of that jet sweep coming up, some sort of play action screen back to the other side. Because once once Xavier Worthy go in motion, oh, we all getting a head start. We getting a head start to that side, and Andy Reid going to run a tight end screen right back to the other side and get six on you. So, yeah, he's special. These dudes have made it to the AFC Championship game six years in a row Patrick ain't never not been there right six years in a row and the two times they didn't go to the Super Bowl as I recall those games went to overtime yep and one of them was an offsides penalty right and then offsides penalty the other one was against the Bengals when uh Joe Burrow threw an interception into the chest of one of the Chiefs players he dropped it and they (laughs) and they went on to go down and win this is, and what makes this so crazy, it's never been a real both sides of the ball situation with these teams. Even last year, where it was more about the defense and then, you know, the greatest player that's ever lived. Yeah. It's right there. Like, I just don't know. How long is it going to be before people try to give up on being contrarian about that and just have to cop to it, man? Like, it's him and then it's everybody else. He's Tiger Woods of this. I don't need to see no more. I don't care what the final tallies are. This is yeah. it. There are no contrarians. No one's a contrarian. People people find these like roundabout ways to not say it, which are respect like he ain't done it enough. He ain't done it long enough. Yeah, that's fine. 
but nobody's out there saying, you know who was actually better? Nobody <laughs> is saying that. Whoa, I mean, hold on. It it wasn't that long ago that they there, there was a there was a few that were trying this about a year, year and change ago. Still yeah. trying to sneak that Josh Allen in there. The Joe Burrows got the better record. People still people were still trying to find ways until last year when it was Patrick and the Pips. Yeah. Now, I mean, it's like you if you put a poll out for anything, you're going to get four or five percent. Like no matter how ridiculous it is, you're going to get four or five percent that vote the other way. Those are those people. We don't need to spend time with those people. There are some reasonable people who are like, well, I mean, if if he just fell off tomorrow, then it's hard to to make the argument that he's the greatest of all times, but he is already the best we've seen do it. Like he's, he's it's hard to argue with that. Imagine being in that division, bro. Like every year, every year, we know that this is what we got to set up against every single year. Bless Jim Harbaugh for taking that job and his crazy ass is here and his craziness I find his craziness to be absolutely delightful. And you will talk about somebody who's here to run the ball. Yeah. He came to run the ball. <laughs> if you can do that, like we've had this conversation before, the um, is the easiest low risk way to win a football game. The reason why people stop running the ball is because it's hard to do like su- successfully. But if you are good at it, don't nobody want to throw the ball. That's put the ball in the air. That's dangerous. Don't nobody want to do that. And yeah. That's backing up. That's opening your your quarterback up to injury. If you can <laughs> run the ball, and we get we get away from that when we start doing all this scheming. And all we need is the best offensive mind in football to keep reminding us every chance he gets is why you guys love these plays that I design. And that's Kyle Shanahan. All of these beautiful plays I design are predicated on the fact that you are scared that I might hand the ball off. <laughs> like even the ones that aren't play action are predicated that the defenses are prepared because it's the first thing you got to stop day one. If you ask any defensive coordinator, what's, what's your job as defensive coordinator? One thing you got to do, stop the run. All right. Now, when we come back after this here advertising break, I'm going to tell you what I need from Kyle Shanahan this week. Very, very, very badly. Oh, that's a tease boy. A tease. <laughs> If you're anything like me, your favorite time of the year and busiest is the start of football season. You might find yourself staying up late to watch the games, snacking more than you typically do, and not on the healthiest options, all while watching super intense games. In case you don't know, all of the game time stress and unhealthy habits can actually take a toll on your hair health in the long run which is why now is the perfect time to start taking Nutrafol. Your hair is never just about your hair, and Nutrafol knows that. It could be the foods you're eating, the sleep you're not getting, or even following your favorite sports team in an intense season. It could be almost anything that has almost nothing to do with hair. That's why Nutrafol takes a whole-body approach to hair health, addressing the problems inside to help hair grow on the outside. Address your root causes of hair thinning with Nutrafol, the hair growth routine that keeps up with your life. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code BOMANI. Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code BOMANI. That's Nutrafol.com, promo code BOMANI. Shout out to the good people over at Viator for hooking it up. Sean, I know we both got back from some travel over the past month. I was in Hawaii for a couple weeks and just recently got back from Europe and took advantage of Viator for both those trips. How was your experience with Viator in France? Uh, It was great, Bo. Uh, Viator helped me find the perfect experience through their app because I was able to explore over 300,000 plus travel experiences. And plus, they have real traveler reviews. So I was able to get insider information from people who've already been on the experiences that I was considering. That's right. And plus free cancellation helps you plan for the unexpected. And Viator also offers 24-7 customer service. So you know you'll get support at any hour if things aren't going as planned. So to all our listeners, download the Viator app now and use code Viator10 for 10% off your first booking in the app. Find the perfect travel experiences for you. Do more with Viator. All right, so I said I need Kyle Shanahan to do something. Now, the 49ers got the opening season Monday night game. It was at home, but they got that game. 
And now they have to go deal with the dreaded one o'clock kickoff for week two against Minnesota. And what I don't need in my life, you're not fooling me with this. You're not going to have 2-0 and Minnesota, and y'all going to tell me that finally Sam Darnold done put this together, right? Like, I realize what I'm setting myself up for. I feel myself being Dominique uh, Foxworth going like this, right? Like, I <laughs> yep. worry that I'm setting it up for Sam, for Sam Bradford to go 11-6 and uh. or something like that. But no, nah, man, they <clears throat> ain't never held out hope on nobody in the way they kept on holding out some hope on some Sam Bradford. I mean, I said Bradford, Sam, Sam Darnold. Darnold. I mean, honestly, I apologize to you, Sam Bradford. Yeah, I was going to say, that Bradford had some good years with them baggies. Yeah, sleeves. yeah, yeah. Yeah, my bad, homie. I ain't even mean to do you like that. But if that happens, boy, they coming right back behind Sam Darnold, man. It's it's going to happen. He's on team four, five, four. Yeah, it's. I think it might be four. But, uh, yeah, it was New York, Carolina, San Francisco, and now Minnesota, I think, right? Yes. Yes, you are correct. It is merely but, four. Yeah, the um, this is just a reminder that our cup runneth over with quality content because never in my life have I been talking about other sports to be like, hey, I don't want another star. <laughs> It'd be nice. Give me something to talk about. <laughs> get out of here. We don't need this foolishness on the side. That's just going to get on our nerves. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's right. Another week of this storyline. Please. That's just going to annoy me. Now nah, we got to move on. We got to get to somewhere else. Let me tell you, the biggest winner in all this mass of storylines is Trevor Lawrence. Where's the beef, homie? Yeah, yeah. Trevor Lawrence, when you watch a Trevor Lawrence game, there, he would, you can pick out highlights. He just can't do it all consistently. And it's funny because yes. that's been like, even in the seasons when he has good runs, he can't put together a full season of it. So like that, when I, um, if I wanted to tell you Trevor Lawrence was great, it'd be easy to pick some plays from this game where he made some incredible throws and he did some incredibly athletic things. But then you go look at uh, the key plays and key situations and he hasn't been able to consistently get that done. And this is the quarter. We're at this quarterback conversation. He gets more cachet because he was highly drafted and we all thought he was going to be good. And there's a fear of the unknown when you don't have a quarterback like that, they're not going to be better without Trevor Lawrence. So you got to pay him. But Trevor Lawrence, is he's not on that top tier. He, he looked like it. He should be, but he's not going to be there. I mean, that whole draft, like, we're going to have some questions about what the effect of COVID was on everything. Because all, all the quarterbacks of that draft, nobody's been as good as we thought they were going to be, unless I'm forgetting somebody. I feel like, especially the top three guys, nobody's been as good as we thought they were going to be. But Trevor Lawrence, as far as I can tell, has been better. Like, right now, Tua is the one that's probably, yeah. I guess we'd have to say, has been the best in that draft, right? Yeah, 100%, and he had a rough, a rough start. Right, right. So we go from Tua, and then we go to Lawrence. And Lawrence is interesting to me because he was the most highly touted guy in the draft at quarterback since Andrew Luck. And I felt like we tried to get – we got ahead of ourselves with, with Luck at various points about how good he actually was. And what he turned out to be was a very good player, but not a very good player the way that we thought he would be. Like, I think we had him a little bit more in the Peyton Manning category – and he was actually a touch closer to Brett Favre. Not the yeah. same, obviously, right? But he was going to go out there and make some what-are-you-doing kinds of decisions. Matthew Stafford might be a good comparison for Luck, yeah, who still good. is going to do headbanging. Don't, there's room to talk about that guy in a second. But he, you know, he's still going to give you these headbanging decisions to go with all this incredible talent. But with Lawrence, I don't watch them enough to know exactly what it is, but I know in watching it, I've never seen – I've yet to see the guy that we're talking about. There was the one throw they put on the internet a lot that he made that was cash money to, I think, Brian Thomas Jr., I think the dude's yeah, name was. Yeah. It was an incredible throw, and I guess that's what you're talking about. You can pull those out of there. But in the end, by now, Trevor Lawrence is supposed to look like something different for him to be what we thought he was going to be. The the argument for, and <laughs> I had a good laugh on my show about how I'm at a point now where I can be honest about black quarterbacks, but <laughs> some of the arguments that you would use that I could use to defend certain black quarterbacks, those things could apply to Trevor Lawrence also, because he hasn't had a lot of good support. And maybe Brian Thomas Jr. is the rookie receiver that he looked really good in this game. Maybe he'll be that guy, but his issue last year, he had a ridiculous amount of drops. And he had Urban Meyer. And now he's like, so it's, I could easily make an argument when you see the talent 
that the problem is can't nobody tame this stallion <laughs> and can't nobody <laughs> give him the stuff that he need to help him. Nobody go properly support him. And that, and I get that. Like, because when you see those throws, like, oh yeah, five, five, six guys in the league can do this. And the ones who can do it consistently without turning it over and making big plays, Trevor, Trevor Lawrence, the, the Matt or yeah, the Matt Stafford analogy is good because you're right. He also, it's not even just like occasional ineptitude. It's just like foolishness. Like what do you, do you even understand the game situation sometimes? And then he come right. out there and throw some laser across the field. You're like, oh, okay. Yo, do you notice this revisionist attempt that feels like they're trying to get Matt Stafford in the Hall of Fame? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, I push back on this narrative of the Detroit Lions holding Matthew Stafford back. And don't get me wrong. The Lions been good and sorry. And I get why that would be your default. But the Lions also gave him a lot of Calvin Johnson, right? Mm -hmm. Matthew Stafford. If I'm not mistaken, has made the Pro Bowl one time. Yeah. yeah it's, if, if it's not one, it's two. Like, it's some incredibly yeah, I mean, he, low he probably, number. He made it once, right, with the with the Lions. Two. And he, pro he made yes. it twice with the Lions? W once with the Lions, yeah, once and he, with, in last year yeah. with the Rams. Yeah, and I was going to say he probably made it with the Rams. So I would, my guess would have been two. But I, I think the, the thing is, there's so many variables in football. And Matt Stafford, had he landed in a different situation, maybe things would have been better. Having Calvin Johnson is one thing, but the Lions have been the Lions. So, but he didn't land in that situation. <laughs> and so it feels uh, dishonest to like give him the credit. It's like sometimes people have such great careers and the only thing they need is that trophy on top. And I think that's what people are trying to make this this uh, Matt Stafford argument is like he's had such a good career, but all he needs is that trophy on top. But he hasn't had the career that you think he had. He had the highlight plays and and maybe again, maybe it's about the situation. But that was the situation. <laughs> we can't give what we can't give what if gold jackets. Well, also, I want to make this note. I've seen great quarterbacks in bad situations. I know what that looks yeah. like, right? You can make the argument Andrew Luck is what mm -hmm. that looks like. Yeah. Cam Newton, I think, for much of his career. Absolutely. That means the dude went to a Super Bowl with Ted Ginn as his number one wide receiver. I've, like, I know what it looks like when a great guy's in a bad situation. He just looked like he played for the Lions. Like, he could go out there and he'd have, he's got such a strong arm. He does the crazy sidearm stuff and everything else. Like, I know what it is that people talk about, but since he got to Georgia in the year 2006, I've been waiting for the dude that everybody talks about. And so after he got to the Rams, they got a Super Bowl, where, by the way, he wasn't even Super Bowl MVP, right? He didn't even make the Pro Bowl in the course of that season. He got there, and he's a very good player who makes head-scratching, boneheaded decisions. But what he can do every now and then is something that is super-duper incredible. But in this league where Vince Young made the Pro Bowl twice, the there is not there that people talk about with Stafford. And it's not like he's giving you a lot of years with like big yards per attempt numbers as you would expect for somebody that has that arm. And you go look at his the records those years with the Lions. He had the years with Caldwell. That's great quarterback development and a dude that puts together a decent offense, right? They had like four years of that. It hasn't been just the Detroit years were not as abjectly terrible as people make them out to be. They just weren't. I think that the he had average to above average coach and surroundings. He has, he had in LA excellent above average coach and surroundings at times. And when we saw that team at its best, we saw a version of Matt Stafford that we were like, man, that's hall of fame. If he could do it every year for the past 12 years. And I think <laughs> people are like, yeah, that's, and that's where they land. The one thing I argument I will make for Matt Stafford is, much as we love when Patrick Mahomes throws a preseason around the back uh, pass, Matt Stafford in the biggest game of his damn life, that man, game winning drive, threw a no look pass right he on did. the money. He did. Cold as shit I seen in a while. And we don't talk. And I'm not one to be like, hey, we blow all the Patrick Mahomes stuff out of proportion. I'm not that guy. <laughs> but had Patrick Dan Mahomes done that, that we, is fair. we never would forget that. And hold that on. Hold, hold on. Hold on. Hold on, guys. You hear this? You hear this? You hear this? Dominique just said racism over. <laughs> 
Right then and there. Dominique just like, y'all always out here complaining. Uh-uh-uh, uh-uh, white man overlooked. Yeah, that that white man one that one moment that three yeah. second play for that white man is overlooked. But hey. they gonna have a rough year if they think that they gonna um they targeted Cooper Cup twenty one times. Man, they are wow. gonna try to kill him twenty one wow. times game one. Threw wow. it at him. But also, I want to say this though uh, for Matt Stafford in fairness, right? We are in an era now of the NFL where we roundly and generally believe you better be able to move to get yeah. this done. He can't really move. Not no more. Still out here getting it done. <laughs> yeah. That this is that's that's fair. Because of that arm. Um, I forgot about this. As you were saying that, and the what ifs is not a fun game to play, but we are kind of playing the what ifs in the positive way with people with Matt Stafford. But we also forget you said he does those boneheaded things. On their Super Bowl run, that was the same one where he he hit a 49ers player safety in the chest with the ball. It would have lost him that game, right? And that mm-hmm. thing bounced off. I forgot who, what, what safety that was. But, yeah, that's the boneheaded plays, and that's the randomness of it, is if you're going to do enough of those boneheaded, boneheaded plays, some of them going to get caught. Yeah, no, they're got, like Carson Palmer is a guy that's in this category also, who at his best was absolutely excellent. But you knew once or twice a game it was going to be your chance. He was going to break out that T-shirt cannon and give something back to the people. <laughs> Carson Palmer was, he was the prototype. He was the big, yes. like, and that's what we get a lot out of, um, out of Trevor Lawrence too, is we are conditioned to think these certain things about these certain guys. Give us one play that looked like he got it. Give me one yes. play that looked like he got it. His, his hair bouncing in the background after you rip it off. People are like, oh, that's what it is. It looked like that. It don't look like that no more, guys. Yeah, we need to find some way to do it for these guys that are like that where we can have them drop back and then they start playing like the, t- the music, the music they run when they break out the t-shirt cannon. Oh, 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 And the DBs just waving their hands up like, beep, 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 da, 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 da. Then when they throw it, when they throw it, you got to do the cannon sound effect too, just, whoop. You see the ball coming out there? You like, like, for example, Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy oh. Garoppolo, you know that that all right, last drive, whether it's the Super Bowl, the mm. NFC Championship game, whatever it is, you know that drive is going to end in an interception. What's that song called? I need to know the name of that song so we can. Is that Zombie we, Nation? I think it's called Zombie Nation. Oh yeah. Well, he's a zombie nation quarterback. Yeah, that's exactly it. Oh. Here come the zombie. <laughs> For- okay, Zombie Nation is the band. Current Craft 400 is the song. Zombie oh, Nation man. is the band. But yeah, that's what it is. Like, you know. He's going to throw that. Kirk Cousins, he's, an, he, he's another zombie. <laughs> he Although now he's a one-legged zombie, boy. He, he, they got a problem down there. Now, now I see why they took Michael Penix, who also <laughs> only has one leg. <laughs> you can't put them together. Yeah, that, that was bad, man. I, I'm sure by now you probably have heard or read about, like, I mean, you, you already know Kirk Cousins, his bag is – Play action from under the center, man. They didn't do it once. That means he can't move, man. It's that like it's like move. going to draft uh, Zach Eady and not giving him the ball at the post. Like maybe yes. that's like that's what you do. That's what makes him good. And they like, all right, we got this guy. He can turn his back to the defense. It's gonna set Bijan up great because running backs don't want to run from the shotgun if they can help it. Like this is gonna work perfectly, and I bought the hype. We're gonna play action, and Pitt's gonna be there. Oh, you they fell for it once. Oh yeah, I fell you for fell it. For, I fell for it. You fell for the combination of Kirk Cousins in an Atlanta Falcons jersey. <laughs> it made perfect sense. They got Bijan, a great running back. They got a great tight end or a talented tight end at least. A great receiver. Kirk Cousins is a play action god. It's all we got to do. Yeah, I fell for it. Okay. okay, look, I need y'all to understand something, right? I understand that a lot of you think I have a very high imp- opinion of myself and a high opinion of my own intelligence. Yes times two, right? <laughs> that is, there's, there's nothing wrong with that, I don't think. But I also make it a point where I surround myself with what I consider to be very bright people, right? Like I, 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 most of the people around me, all the people I can really think of, they all real sharp. And a lot of them, they know something that I don't know. Like, I really appreciate that they got that sharpness about them. 
And I feel like what the basis of our friendship is, is also largely appreciating and understanding the expertise that each of us has and deferring to that expertise in some moments. And it works because I do that for the homies. And I would like to think that the homies would show me that back in return. But oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, sir. I show up to work and Kirk Cousins start playing for the Atlanta Falcons. And I find out that Dominique is like, she don't know nothing. <laughs> Right. Like there's other ways that this has manifested itself. And I'm like, hey, man, that's people stuff. But this right here, this this what this 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 me, bro, this I, I have told y'all all it. Wow. Yeah. OK. <laughs> Damn. In, in, in my defense, <laughs> it felt like it was an intersection and our expertise is yes, yes, and, I yes was, that's and that's how that's how i got confused because if yes. it was just about your particular side of the venn diagram i'm not gonna be like nah that don't make sense <laughs> i looked at my side and i was like but football says this football football <laughs> got beat football got beat Falcons. i'll tell you this nine years ago i made a similar mistake with an atlanta team the hawks had swept the Cavs in the regular season in lebron's first season back in cleveland and i looked at the rosters and i was like yep matchups are bad hawks are gonna win this one you know what the hawks didn't win a single solitary goddamn game. That's right. Once they didn't win. Once they yep. did not. You may have seen Jeff T talk about it yep. on his podcast. He said LeBron rolled up on them at the All Star game, but was like, "I figured y'all out." <laughs> he told him, I "Figured y'all out." <laughs> Imagine somebody walking up on you. Y'all the number one team. Y'all yeah. sent four people to the All Star game, and LeBron yeah. walk up. Oh, what's up, homie? Congratulations. Figured y'all out. I wanted so like. At that point, how they react to that? Because, I mean, obviously, at a certain point, if LeBron says that to you, you're terrified. I wonder if they were like, uh, whatever. Nah, from the, the sound of Jeff Teague, who that I have to say appears to be more self-aware than the average bear. He he figured it out. I also had this thought while I'm sitting here before I forget about this with the Matthew Stafford um, reclamation tour that people are going on. All I'm saying is, if your team get rid of you and replace you with Jared Goff, and they better with Jared Goff than they were with you, I don't give a damn how much the situation changed. Pepper, not, like, well, we—I mean, you just went down there and did with the Rams with Jared Goff. It already did. Just the difference being one game. <laughs> That's a little bit unfair. A little bit unfair. All I'm saying is <laughs> the facts are the facts. Jared, Jared Goff got to a Super Bowl. Under those with that setup. Now, granted, um, Stafford did not have Todd Gurley, which is a uh, whoo boy, that boy. That we go, we go have to explain to other people about Todd Gurley at some point, right? Like, we don't get a lot of those anymore. Those kind of flash in the pan I and mean, flash in the pan is not fair. He got hurt, yeah. but you know what I mean. Mm. But who Todd Gurley was a monster. Was. And that that helped a lot. That was the yes. offense. Whereas yes. when Jared Goff was there, or excuse me, when Matt Stafford got there, it slightly changed. So, and the way that Matt Stafford is winning now is impressive. But yes. it's it's about that offensive line, guys. That's it's fair. About that That's fair. Line. That's fair. But at the same time, like I'm just saying, man, the Lions happier with Jared Goff than they ever was yes. with Matthew Stafford. That's all. Of, that's 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 all I'm saying. They're a lot happier with him, and I don't think I didn't think you could be happy with him as your quarterback in the National Football League. <laughs> well, I, you could say that he went to replace Jared Goff and got done what he couldn't get done. But I guess the difference is much more vast if you just yes. look at the results. It's much more vast yes. for what Stafford was with the Lions than yes. what um, Goff was with the Rams. I'm going to make this point, too. I just said I didn't know a team could be happy with Jared Goff as their quarterback. The Lions are very happy with the team that they have with him as their quarterback. You know who nobody's ever been happy with when he's their quarterback? Kirk Cousins. Not a single, not 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 a team, not a head coach, not a one. Yeah, I had a, another name in my head. I was thinking Russell, but oh, I mean, Cousins. there was a time where they were happy with Russell in Seattle. Uh, it seemed like, well, I guess maybe the coach was. It seemed like the team yes. never was really happy with yeah, him. It, yeah, it depends <laughs> on what you mean by they. Right, <laughs> like like that is the yo man Russell. And so here's what's interesting about this: Is Russell Wilson a Hall of Fame quarterback? Because everything on paper says yes. He has a statistical profile and a set of accolades. Super Bowl, nine Pro Bowls, um, big yards per attempt numbers. Like He has numbers that say 
this is a Super Bowl. I mean, this is a Hall of Fame quarterback, but it does not jibe at all with what's happened the last three years. Like, what's happened in the last three years at that age just doesn't happen to a Hall of Fame player. It's so um, rare that the movie writes itself so well, but that interception on the goal line, that changed everything, man. He scored yeah. that, that touchdown right there or whatever. They going to win that Super Bowl, which they I don't know what the win probability was, but it was high. I feel like that changes everything in the trajectory of the rest of his career because that was the beginning, I think, the beginning yeah. of the end where it all started. And it wasn't his fault. Part. And it wasn't even his, like, on yeah. all the levels. It was a great pick. Yeah. Like, he didn't make the play call. Mm-hmm. It was the right move also because they had 14 people in that box. Yeah. Yeah. It all made sense, but that was the like the incident that redirected. I don't. I never saw the Joker, but I know that's about uh, how somebody turned into a villain or whatever. And I mm-hmm. assume that there was one real bad thing that happened to him. That was the bad thing, and it changed it. And you're right about the way that his career is ending. It's bad. He's talking himself or walking himself out of the Hall of Fame. I guess we get enough distance from it. He went from being a first ballot guy to, or on the trajectory of a first ballot guy to a guy that we're going to have to think about. Maybe we get enough distance from the end of his career. People will look at the the broad numbers and put him in. But if he ended it now, five years from now, he ain't getting that call. And who's willing to go in that room and stand on the table on his behalf? Because that is one of the, even though they only went to two Super Bowls, that is one of the like iconic teams of its era, those Legion of Boom yeah. Seahawks teams for that decade. These are the guys that are going to go in the Hall of Fame off of that team, I say with confidence. Marshawn Lynch, I think, is going to go in the Hall of Fame. Like Marshawn Lynch and Adrian Peterson from that draft class are going, and then it's going to be nobody till Derrick Henry and Christian McCaffrey as running backs, right? But I think he goes in. Garen, and I, that's how I think. Mm-hmm. That defense has three guarantees. Bobby Wagner, mm-hmm. Richard Sherman, and the best player they had, Earl Thomas. Yep. Hey, man, if that iconic team got four guys going in the Hall of Fame, they might not need no fifth. Yeah. I don't know. I think you're probably right. And I saw you you just brought up his name. And I guess we got plenty of football that's coming up to talk about. But um, I saw Marshawn Litch talking about Adrian Peterson. And sometimes I just forget about guys and then remind it, especially guys that I played against. And I was reminded of Adrian Peterson. And they tell a story on their podcast where they said the Legion of Boom was like kind of arrogant going into the game against Adrian Peterson in the very first play. Adrian went for 76 on, <laughs> cut their whole defense up and left. And I played it like my thing is I'm being is I'm fast. I played against Adrian Peterson one time and ain't nobody ever. I, I, I know two guys that ran away from me and I couldn't catch. And none of them weighed over 200 pounds. One was <laughs> Bethel Johnson. And it was we yes. were I was a I was blocking him on punt return. And I was like, oh. Because everybody, like, I, I do my little punt return block. I let him get away. I go catch him at the point of attack. Boom. I did that with him. There was no catching. And Adrian <laughs> Peterson, I took an <laughs> angle. That man outran my angle. You can't outrun a, a, a 4-3 angle. That's not supposed to happen. I had the angle in the speed, and he was big. And he just, just gone. It's ridiculous. Adrian Peterson, like, when Adrian, that game Adrian Peterson played as a freshman against Texas that I call the Adrian Peterson triathlon because he ran, swam, and biked through them to the tune of 214 vicious soul-crushing yards. I was like, this is like this is the best running back I've ever seen. And as big and strong as he was, it wasn't like he was Bo Jackson big and strong. You know what I mean? Like It was yeah. a very functional sort of thing, but hey, man, it feel like he asked a boxer to manage his money. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that ain't good, man. That ain't good. That's unfortunate. <laughs> There's, uh, yeah, I, it was a while ago that people were doing those um internet videos where they like pretend like they're God and they pour a certain amount of of liquid into a bowl and then like the liquid represents different attributes. God spent a lot of it on that athleticism. Now he's a, he he yeah. gave a lot to that strength and power and speed on Adrian yeah. Adrian Peterson. Oh, my goodness. But that is Dominique Fosworth. Check him out on the Dominique Fosworth Show, available where all five podcasts are sold. My brother, I appreciate you. Always, brother. Thank you. All righty, man. Uh, Sean, you got prize picks for the people. I sure do. Some Sunday football uh, picks for you. Uh, as I mentioned in the ad read, Caleb Williams, we get a .5 pass yard bonus. So if he gets more than one yard, 
uh, you win there. So I'm definitely taking that. I'll also take Lamar Jackson, 50 and a half rush yards. I'll take more. And then uh, Anthony Richardson <laughs> for uh, 0.5 rush or reception <laughs> touchdowns. I'll take a rush touchdown for AR, who is uh, really – I apologize for not getting a chance to talk to Dominique about Anthony Richardson. (laughs) (laughs) I saw both of you guys light up when I mentioned it. Cup runneth over. It's just too much. It's just too much to talk about. He's going to give us some more next week. All I can do, as you keep mentioning Anthony Richardson, all I do is keep laughing. Like, that's the only card I got here. (laughs) It's just, I don't know how good he is, but I know how good he made me feel. (laughs) He does it to everybody, too. It's crazy. Oh, my goodness. But, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us here on The Right Time. Hit the voicemail line, 323-596-7767. In honor of Kendrick Lamar continuing his drug grudge against Drake. What's the longest grudge you've seen anybody hold on to? 323-596-7767. John, you handles everything behind the scenes. Thank you, sir. Remember, follow the right time. Subscribe, like, rate us, review us, give us five stars. You only give us four stars. I'm inclined to believe you are a hater. Talk to you guys in a couple of days. Take it easy.